Hello and welcome to this week's 7 Days of Science. Let's start with the Virgin Galactic spaceship this week as it completed a supersonic test flight after a fatal crash in 2014. The world's first commercial spaceship, the Spaceship 2 passenger rocket ship, aims to start flying people out of the Earth's atmosphere by the end of the year. In other news, it has been found that the smokescreen used to hide the Nazi battleship Tirpitz during the Second World War did enormous damage to the surrounding trees, and this damage is seen in their growth ring. During the Second World War, the Tirpitz, the less famous sister ship to the Bismarck, was stationed in Norwegian fjords to deter allies from invading, and there was a relentless campaign by the British to sink it. If British ships or planes were close by, or were coming in for a bombing run, the German Navy would screen it with chemical fog, which in turn damaged the vegetation in the area. Scientists have found that there has been a significant shift in planetary ocean currents, saying that this system in the Atlantic Ocean is weaker than it has been for over a thousand years. This comes from scientists from the Atlas Project, a study into Atlantic ecosystems, and makes comparisons to the 2004 movie The Day After Tomorrow, as these changes could cool parts of the world. A very unique fossil of an ichthyosaur was described this week by paleontologists at the University of Manchester. The partial skeleton was discovered in Yorkshire several years ago, and preserves the remains of eight embryos amongst the ribs of the fossil. It's the oldest known example of ichthyosaur embryos found in Britain, with the pregnant individual having lived around 180 million years ago. More ichthyosaur news this week, again from paleontologist Dean Lomax at the University of Manchester and others. A partial bone from the lower jaw of an ichthyosaur has been identified, but what makes this discovery particularly exciting is that it comes from potentially the largest reptile to have ever existed. When compared to the same bone in the current largest reptile we know of, a similar ichthyosaur called Shonisaurus, they found this new specimen to be around 25% bigger. Using this information, estimates put the new ichthyosaur at lengths of about 26 metres, almost the same size of a blue whale. However, it should be noted that due to the incompleteness of the fossil, it's difficult to get an accurate size, and it may turn out to have been a bit smaller than this. A very strange and incorrect hypothesis has made its way into the news this week, something being called biotic revenge. Two psychologists have claimed that the reason non-avian dinosaurs became extinct was due to the gradual increase in numbers of toxic plants. They say that dinosaurs would then feed on them and become ill, but they lacked something known as taste aversion, in which you avoid going back and feeding on something that makes you ill again. The increase in toxins was then of course the herbivore dinosaurs to die out, causing havoc in the food chains and leading to many dinosaurs extinction before the asteroid hit. This hypothesis has been heavily criticised by paleontologists, and it seems to have completely overlooked the fact that animals would have evolved with the plants over the millions of years when they were becoming more toxic, as well as that non-avian dinosaurs were not the only organisms to go extinct, there were also pterosaurs, and most importantly to this argument, marine organisms that wouldn't have been feeding on these plants. The paper was also not peer-reviewed by paleontologists, and yet, Annoyingly, the media seems to be treating the idea seriously. So Seven Days of Science is now the most reliable news source on the internet, which is kind of worrying actually. This week, the Natural History Museum in London has started a project that aims to digitally scan all of the fossils that Charles Darwin discovered while voyaging on the HMS Beagle around South America. The fossils are very old and fragile, and by digitalising them, the museum is making them available for study by scientists from around the world. The first specimen to be scanned is the skull of Toxodon, an ancient hoofed mammal, and you can view it on the Natural History Museum website. That's it for this week, thank you very much for watching as always, and we'll see you on Sunday.